Hey, what's going on guys? It's Brainbean here again, back with another Razer product launch for you. They have just been going nuts this month and last month with product releases, and today we're gonna be taking a look at the new Razer Basilisk Ultimate, which elevates the original Basilisk up to the level of what we saw with the Viper Ultimate. So with that, let's go ahead and just check this mouse out. The Razer Basilisk Ultimate has a right-handed ergonomic design, and I'd say it's on the larger side of mid-size mice. The mouse dimensions come in at 130 millimeters in length, 75 millimeters wide by 42 millimeters at its highest point. But just by looking at the shape, it's pretty clear that Razer's coming after the G502 here. I found the Basilisk to be surprisingly more comfortable than I was expecting from using the Viper Ultimate, and it's about 33 grams heavier than that Viper Ultimate as well, so keep in mind that it doesn't feel quite as nimble as a true lightweight mouse. That said, I find that the Basilisk does feel much more comfortable in larger hands as its design can accommodate a variety of grips. It's great for palm grip users, and it's long enough for a really comfortable claw grip. A fingertip grip is possible as well, but it might be best suited to those with longer fingers to really feel the most comfortable. The Basilisk has a thumb rest that comes out from the side as well, and it allows you to rest your thumb on it without having to have it drag on the mouse pad. I wasn't a fan of this at first, but it actually won me over after using it for a while and realizing that I actually suffer from dragging my thumb on the mouse pad quite a bit. Both sides of the mouse have textured rubberized grips that feel nice in the hand. The construction here feels really solid. There's no creaking when squeezing the body of the mouse. There's no visible splits in the seams, and it comes finished in the same matte plastic as the Huntsman, only it has the addition of some glossy accents around the body. Now these glossy accents will show fingerprints, but overall I'd say it's a pretty nice looking mouse. The lights themselves get plenty bright and vibrant, and coupled with the aggressive look of this mouse, it's all pretty snazzy. The Basilisk Ultimate has 11 programmable buttons. Mouse 1 and 2 use Razer's new optical switch, which uses light to actuate the clicks instead of mechanical contact points. Now, by now, you may be familiar with these already, but long story short, they are snappy and responsive, and because they don't have mechanical contact points, they result in a much longer lifespan of up to 70 million clicks. They also eliminate the issue of developing double clicking over time. Now, Mouse 1 does have a little bit of a wobble to it. It's not the worst that I've seen, but it's there. And on mouse 2, it's much less of an issue, if barely noticeable at all. Thumb buttons mouse 4 and 5 are a bit longer and larger than on the Viper. It's not quite as big as you'd find on something like the Mamba or the Death Adder, but it is a noticeable increase. They have a glossy texture to them, and I do find them a little bit more pronounced and easier to click than on the Viper Ultimate. They have good crisp clicks to them, and they're not mushy or anything like that. And returning on the Ultimate, we also have the multi-function paddle that comes with the regular Basilisk. It also comes with a rubber plug that you can use to cover up the hole where the paddle goes if you don't want to use it. Now you can use this for a variety of different functions from a sniper button for fast DPI reduction while you hold it down or simply as an extra mouse button. I don't personally use it all that much, but it's always great to have extra options. It secures magnetically to the mouse and the mechanism that it actually secures with won't let it pop off during normal use, which is great. You also get two buttons located directly behind the scroll wheel which are bound to DPI by default and the scroll wheel can be clicked directionally from side to side as well. Now the scroll wheel has a nice rubberized texture to it that should feel familiar to anyone who's used a recent Razer mouse, but one cool feature of the Basilisk Ultimate is that you can tune the tactility of the scroll wheel by turning a dial located underneath the mouse from no bump at all all the way up to an audibly tactile scroll. It's a nice feature and I always appreciate customization. I did find myself messing with it quite a lot to really dial it in, but that could just be a case of having way too many options. The scroll wheel on the Basilisk does stick out quite a bit for my tastes, and I would have preferred if it was a little bit more recessed into the mouse. But if you prefer a larger scroll wheel, you'll definitely enjoy it on the Basilisk, so keep that in mind. And of course, I want you guys to get your click fix, so we're going to go ahead and do a sound test of the Basilisk Ultimate. The Basilisk Ultimate brings all the wireless features from the Viper Ultimate, meaning that it uses Razer's Hyperspeed Wireless, which dynamically changes its frequencies constantly to ensure the best latency-free connection. It's rock solid and performs just as well for me as it did on the Viper. 
The battery life here is also really good, especially considering how much more RGB the Basilisk has. It can run for up to 100 hours on a single charge, and like the Viper, it comes with a charging dock that has a little RGB ring around it on the underside just for a little aesthetic tie-in to your other devices. The Basilisk can get up to 5 hours of charge in just 10 minutes of sitting on the dock, which is just crazy fast. So basically, as long as you pop this thing on there whenever you go to grab a drink or take a bathroom break, you basically never have to plug it in. Now while on the charger, the entire mouse will pulse red, yellow, or green depending on the current charge of the mouse. The dock will also pulse red when you're about to run out of juice just to let you know it's time to plug it in. And you can also just plug it in and use it wired in a pinch if you don't want to stop playing. Now this mouse uses the same Focus Plus optical sensor that we got in the Viper for 99.6 resolution accuracy, 20,000 DPI, and 650 IPS. Now this sensor is nuts. I mean, it performs really, really well. And it's augmented by Razer's collaboration with PixArt that adds smart features like smart tracking, which does away with the need to manually calibrate the mouse to each new surface you play on. So smart tracking will automatically calibrate itself across different mouse surfaces, ensuring liftoff distance and accuracy remains consistent. You also get asymmetric cutoff, which allows you to set the distance at which the mouse starts tracking again after picking it up, or basically just calibrating your landing distance. You also get motion sync, which you can think of it as kind of a G-sync for your mouse, as it aligns your mouse signal intervals to the rate that the PC extracts information from the sensor for maximum responsiveness. I tested this while playing Apex Legends, my current go-to shooter, and I noticed even in my warm-up sessions with Kovacs before booting up the game that I was doing really well cold. But because of its weight, quick flicking shots aren't quite as easy, but in place of that speed, I found an increased sense of control. Everything on the mouse can be configured in Razer Synapse from the keybinds, sensor settings, and lighting, and you can save up to 5 profiles right on the mouse and there's a button located conveniently on the underside of the mouse for switching profiles. I like this as it's out of the way, you don't accidentally click it, but it's also really easy to do on the fly. The underside of the mouse has 100% PTFE feet, which glide noticeably smoother than any of Razer's previous mice, minus the Viper Ultimate, which also has them. Overall, I'm really impressed yet again with the progress that we're seeing from Razer. They took another mouse shape and elevated it to the status of the Viper Ultimate. But not only that though, they made some additional changes that really bring this mouse to a whole nother level as an FPS mouse. It's not perfect, there is some minor wobble in Mouse 1, and I do think that the scroll wheel is just a little bit too high for me. But other than that, it's pretty great. The real hurdle here is that the mouse is $170, which is a lot for a mouse. Hell, it's what most people pay for a decent entry-level video card, so it is a bit exclusionary at this price. But if you're looking for a super solid right-handed ergonomic mouse with uncompromising wireless and RGB capability with a ton of customization options, you found it. Well, that's it for the review, guys. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about the Basilisk Ultimate or maybe which Razer mouse you want to see elevated up into the status of the Viper or the Basilisk Ultimate. You can also give this video a like if you enjoyed it, show your support. And if you're new here on the channel, I'd love to see you subscribe. I've got a lot more videos like this coming for you in the near future. And if you're a returning subscriber and you haven't clicked that notification bell yet, make sure you hit that so that you're notified anytime I release a video. You can also follow me on Twitter at Brainbean Gaming for all of my giveaway announcements. I am giving away five of my top five keyboards right now. I'll have links to that video down in the description and I'll be announcing that on my Twitter. So you wanna make sure that you don't miss out on that. But as always guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.